you lovely people. This is Jesse V. Can we just acknowledge my Sailor Moon shirt for a sec? So cool. Okay, so I decided to do another story time with V, but I'm gonna change the name. It's gonna be called V Time now. That's just what I decided. As weird as it sounds, it's V Time, okay? So the story today is called My Creepy Neighbor. And this story, let me tell you, is very creepy. I don't know how I get myself into these situations. I don't know. So back in my early years of high school, I had a major crush on this guy. Like major, out of this world major. We went to different schools schools but we had the same bus stop so I got to see him every single morning and afternoon you know when I was getting on or off the bus I remember I had like this journal where I'd like write about him and like how I thought he was so cute and <sighs> come to think of it it was a bit creepy on my part but you know young love <laughs> young love Anyways, I couldn't get the courage to talk to this guy. I'd always put these things in my head where I was like, hey, today when he gets off the bus, I'm gonna say hi. But every time he got off the bus, I could not get the courage to talk to him. And I was always wondering, like, does he like me? Is it only one-sided? What's going on here? So one day, I think it was the summer of grade nine, I got a Skype request from him, okay? And my heart just like completely, I almost had a heart attack. I was like, oh my God, I have been acknowledged. He knows I exist, he knows me. Anyways, we ended up talking on Skype for a good, like three hours just like getting to know each other talking about how like we saw each other at the bus stop but we're too like nervous to say hi so like we were in the same boat and yeah we talked like that for probably a good week just like hours on end just talking it was really cool oh and did I mention he lived two houses down from me so literally we were on Skype talking and we didn't even go to like see each other Ugh. Wow. So finally, finally, he was like, you know what, Jess, we should meet up. And I was like, oh my, yes. I've been thinking of this moment for the last three years. We gotta meet up. So he was like, why don't you come over to my house and we will watch a movie. And I was like, movie, that is a good start. A movie is always a good start because if it gets awkward, you just watch the movie. You don't have to talk if you don't want to, you know? It was a great beginning. So the day that we were supposed to hang out, I remember I got like all dressed up, got some makeup on, did my hair. I was so excited. And I texted him, I'm like, okay, I'm heading Heading over to your house right now and he was like okay just walk in the door I was like okay I'll walk in the door <laughs> so like as I'm walking up to his house my heart's beating so fast I'm so nervous and I get to his door take a deep breath <sighs> I knock a few times and then I open it. And he's already just standing in the hallway. And like, this is our first time we've ever stood in front of each other looking at each other. So I was like, hi, oh my gosh, hi. So remember when I said that he invited me over to watch a movie? Well, I saw his living room with the couch and a big screen TV. So, I mean, I went and sat on the couch cause I'm like, okay, we're watching a movie. Let me sit down. The minute I sit down, he goes, we do not watch movies in this house. We do not watch movies in this house. And I was like, You've got a TV though. And he was like, yeah, but <clears throat> not in this house. And you know, that was a little, little strange to me, I thought. I was like, okay, well, what are we, what are we doing then? Because I mean, that's why I was invited over. And he answered my question pretty quickly, because he was like, we're going in my garage. And I was like, oh, the garage, what a great place for a first date, the garage. It's what I've always dreamed of. So anyway, takes me into his garage. And as you can imagine, it was um, a dirty, smelly garage, like probably most garages are, you know? garbage bags, skateboards, dirty shoes. It was a great place, a great place. Anyway, on the floor of his garage, he had the tiniest little TV. It was, I am not even, it, it was tiny, it was, it was, it was so small. And so he was like, what do you want to watch? And before I even answered, he was like, let's watch Shutter Island. And like, I had never seen Shutter Island, so I was, I was up for it. I heard it was a great movie. You know, everyone likes Leonardo DiCaprio, why not? And he was like, yeah, like, that movie's the best. Like, at the end, he finds out it's all in his head. And I was like, oh, you just, you just ruined the movie for me. So, you know, I, I realized that this date was going a little strange, all right? But I was prepared. I was like, you know what? Maybe this is just off to a bad start, but we can make it better. So the next thing he does is he takes out these foldable chairs. You know, like, if you go to, like some kid's soccer game and you bring like those just foldable chairs to sit on the grass with. Yeah, he took out some foldable chairs, okay, and told me to sit. So you gotta picture this, this scenario, okay? We're on foldable chairs in front of the tiniest, tiniest TV and a dark, stinky, messy garage on our first date. <laughs> what? What? So it's, it's a summer day, so being in a hot, stinky garage is not good. So I was like, can you um, just open the garage, even if it's a little bit? Because I'm, <clears throat> I'm about to pass out here. I, 
I'm about to die. It's really hot in here. And he was like, yeah, I can do that for you, Jeff. So he, you know, lifts the garage up. And so I'm finally getting some air, okay? We're watching Shutter Island. It's okay. I mean, we're doing all right. Anyway, I was like, I'm kind of thirsty. Do you have any water or something? And he's like, I have juice boxes. I've got juice boxes. And I was like, whoa, juice boxes. That's, that's great. So we got our juice boxes in hand. We're like halfway through the movie and all of a sudden I see my father at the end of his driveway looking in the garage at us and I was like oh my gosh my dad is watching us on our first date in this garage so I like texted him I'm like dad dad go away what are you doing dad please leave me alone this is so embarrassing and he was like oh Jess I'm just making sure you're okay you know it's your first date I just want to make sure you're okay and I was like yeah but dad like that's you're creepy like he was just peering in the garage anyway he finally left and it was I really hope that guy did not think it was my dad. Could have just thought it was some creepy man staring at us. So the movie is almost done, and I don't know how I didn't realize this before, but I started hearing these like buzzing sounds, and I kind of look around the garage, I'm like, what is... Sounds like bees, what is this? And my eye focuses to the top corner of the garage, and there is, I kid you not, a giant hornet's nest. I was like, dude, I cannot sit here anymore. Those... those things are coming out, alright? They're... They're heading towards us over here. I cannot do hornets. So he was like, Just, I kill hornets all the time. All right, let me get my hornet bat. This guy had a hornet bat in his garage. So I start to think like, how many hornets nests do they get in their garage to name a bat the hornet bat? They, they, they must be like, <laughs> I mean, this whole day so far was the most confusing, weirdest thing I had ever experienced. So like, he gets out his bat and he's like, Joss, you better stand back, okay? Cause these things are going everywhere. And I was like, oh my, this is how I die. So he starts like smacking the shit out of that hornet's nest. And you know, as you can imagine, those hornets went crazy, okay? They just swarmed the garage. So I was like, I need to, I need to flee this place before I get, I don't even, I left. I ran out. I ran to the end of the driveway, okay? And a few minutes later, he was like, Jess, it's fine. Jess, come back in. It's fine. Come sit on your little seat here. It's fine, Jess. And I was like, you cannot make me go back in there if you gave me $200. I'm not. So he was like, I got an idea. Let's go into my basement. And I was like, um, your bait can I don't, can we just use the TV in your house? Considering there's big comfy couches, a big screen TV, why cannot, why can't we just go there? There's air conditioning, I mean there's food, water, why are we, like, he was like against his living room. I don't know why, he was a, he, <sighs> so you know, stupid Jess over here was like, yeah, let's, let's go to your basement. Because the day wasn't weird enough that I thought, let me take this opportunity to make it weirder. So we go down this like rickety staircase down to his basement. And it was, it was not a finished basement. It was, there was concrete, it was cold. And in the corner there was a couch with a, I don't know, decent sized TV, I guess. But what was really strange was that his basement was filled with probably about 20 cats. Yeah. They, you could not walk through his basement without them grabbing onto your legs. I mean, you're basically walking through cats. And I am not a cat person. I am a dog person all the way. So I was like, I'm just gonna get on this couch and hopefully they'll leave me alone. But no, the minute I sat on his couch, all these cats just surrounded me. They loved me. I didn't love them. I was like, kitties, get off me. I, ugh. Anyway, so he puts on, what's that movie name? Dead Silence. It's like that movie with the, the like demon puppet. You know those people who like go up on stage with those dolls? Whatever they're called, okay? Cannot remember the name right now. But yeah, we watched a movie about this demon, demon thing. So he turns off all the lights in his basement and there's no windows down there. So, I mean, we're sitting in pitch black. We're sitting in pitch black, cats all around us watching this creepy movie. And not once has he offered me, you know, some food. So I'm starving. Anyway, he gets really close to me, really, really close. Like right up to my ear, like that close, and whispers, I don't bite. And that was like the last draw for me. So like I stood up and I was like, listen, this is not working out. I need to go home. I need to go home. So I left his house and I never returned. I had wasted like three years of my life having a major crush on him, only to realize that he was a complete weirdo. So Lesson learned, guys. Make sure you know the person before, you know, having a fallout crush on them because... And, and, and don't follow my footsteps. Do not hang out in a dirty, dark garage or basement. You know, red flags should be going up. Anyways, if you have a story similar to mine where you're in an uncomfortable or weird situation with a guy or girl, 
please feel free to comment. Um, I love hearing your stories as well. If you enjoy V Time, please give this video a thumbs up. I have no problem continue making them. Um, if you want to be seeing some other topics from me, just please put them in the comments as well. I always take requests. Also, I put my Instagram and Twitter below, so please follow. Have a great day, guys. Until next time, bye. <laughs>